Through their activities, bees have changed the face of the earth for themselves and for us. If you went back about 300 million years ago, this is what the earth would look like, green and brown and boring. Today, when we go out and we look at the landscapes, we see a different picture. We see a kaleidoscope of color, something that looks very similar to patches of color splotched onto a painter's palette. But in this case, the pigments that are used for painting the landscape are not the pigments of an artist, but the pollen that they produce and use bees to distribute. And the bee, of course, is the painter. So 400 million years ago, the first plants uh, invaded the earth. I mean, the, the, the terrestrial habitats. Um, about 250 million years ago, we had the first flowering plants. Then about 125 million years ago, there was an explosion of flowering plants and bees. This is known as an adaptive radiation. There was an explosion of new species that took place. Today, we have about 350,000 recognized plant species, or it's estimated that there are 350,000 plant species, and about 74 to 94% of them need pollinators. This was Darwin's abominable mystery. He was just puzzled by it. The, the fact that you could have the, all of these species occurring in a very short period of time. It, it was, you know, he wrote to his friends and said, I can't understand it. This is, can't be possible that we have this kind of rapid evolution. But he went and resolved it to his own uh, satisfaction anyway by, by invoking this idea of the co-evolution, the dance of the two, the bees and the plants were very rapidly adapting to each other, and that this could accelerate the whole process of evolution. For Darwin, the problem comes right from what I call the essence of Darwinism. The essence of Darwinism is, number one, traits vary within populations. And the variant traits are differentially expressed and differentially affect the survivor and or the reproductive success of the individuals that have those traits. This enable, enables those with some traits to leave more offspring and those with other traits, less desirable traits, to leave fewer offspring. Then if the traits are heritable, that just simply means that the, um, the offspring are similar to the parents. Uh, then the parents will transmit those traits to their offspring. And then uh, the most favorable traits will then increase in their representation in the population from one generation to the next. In other words, the population will evolve. So this was tricky because Darwin really presented uh, the evolutionary process of being you know, proceeding at glacial speeds, a very, very slow process. So it took place in tiny steps over geological time. So the presence of bursts of new species that occurred suddenly in this fossil record that gave rise to all these flowering plants and all these bees, uh, in some way gave credit to the arguments of the creationists of the time and cast doubt on his gradual evolution arguments. But as I said, Darwin resolved the difficulty, at least to his own satisfaction, and to that of most of his colleagues and people today, by invoking this concept of co-adaptation. 